Welcome to Online Church. It is amazing to have you here. I'm Sarah and I'm going to be bringing you this week's announcements. So there is no Toddlers Club this week, unfortunately, and Life Group is this week, so check online for more details. And then Thursday night, we have Alpha at 7.15. Also an amazing night, so hopefully going to see you there. And then Friday night, we have Outreach, and there will be more details for that online, but it is incredible and we have church which is on sunday we have a service in here at 10 a.m and then we have another service at 12 p.m if you miss out on the early one and church online is will be at half 11. so now we're just gonna get back to worship you know just be blessed and just be in the moment with the holy spirit Every voice I raise, I'll raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I'll raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I'll raise a hallelujah. My weapon is the melody. I'll raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me. I'm gonna sing. I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm.
sing. Sing a little louder. 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 Oh, this 
back to Vibe Online. So good that you can join us and we are so excited that you're here. Uh, I mean, it's just been a crazy season. It's been years and years of us doing this thing now, which is crazy to think about. But we love to do it and we're hearing testimonies of people tuning into online and it bringing encouragement, bringing help and even bringing them to church uh, if they're close enough. So we're just so glad that you're here and don't forget to share. Don't forget to let, the, let other people know if there's someone at home and they've got nothing to watch or they need something new to check out, then you can share it, you can send it, you can email it. But I just want to pray today. I want to pray for all the things that maybe you're facing, want to pray some of the things you're going through. And remember, at any stage, you can email us, prayer at vibeni.com, and we are here for you. We've got a team that prays, and we believe in Jesus. We believe for miracles, we believe for breakthrough, and we believe for healing. And so even if you can't come physically, we can pray for you. So I want to pray. We've got our outreaches coming up. We've been doing our kids club for the last five, six weeks. It's been amazing. We've just had an incredible week just passed. There's none next week in the building. So we're going out to the estates to do a light party. So I'd love you to pray for us. If you're available, come help us. We're going into the estates, going to have sparklers, glow sticks. Well, maybe not sparklers because they can burn kids, but we'll have glow sticks, the bouncy castle, Duncan's for apples. We're going to bring a light party because we believe we're the light of the world, the hope of the world. And wherever we go, we shine in the midst of the darkness. So we're going to pray for that. Uh, we continue to pray for our Alpha. It's been so great just to see people coming, discussing life questions. That's on every Thursday night at 7.15. And I really encourage you, if you're local or can come, 
come down to it. And if you can't come and you want to tune in, you can do it on Zoom. We watch videos online. We'll send you the link. You can join in for the chats afterwards on Zoom and you can be a part of what we're doing. But Alpha is just a great way to think about big life questions and to help you find some answers that will ultimately lead you to God. So we're praying for all those things. Uh, our prayer and worship, our life groups, all oh, so many different things are going on and we're just getting excited. And also, I want you to pray ahead of time because we've got some great events coming up in the next month or so uh, in November and in December and we want you to pray for the whole thing. So we're going to pray for you. Uh, I want to pray for some people that are going through trials. I want to pray for some people that's just going through sickness. I want to pray for some people that just need hope. Maybe need job security. Maybe need breakthrough in finance. Maybe need breakthrough with healing. We're going to pray for all of those things and believe in Jesus' name. So come on, we're going to pray together. Lord, I thank you today for your goodness. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are with us and you're here, Lord. And so I pray, Lord, there's many things that's going on in our world. Maybe it's job, it's sickness, COVID, family crisis. There's so many different things. And I pray today, Lord, that we would know your peace. Lord, that you, you would set us free in the midst of our struggles. Lord, that you would be there for us and you would help us. Lord, I pray that you would encourage us. And I pray, Holy Spirit, right now that you would come. Give us your peace, Lord. Give us your encouragement. Lord, there are things in our lives, Lord, that we're believing for breakthrough. And we believe for them in Jesus' name. So I want to speak life right now, Lord. Whatever we're facing, whatever you're going through, we speak life in Jesus' name. And we are believing for breakthrough because we know that you love us and care for us. Lord, I pray for our outreaches. I pray for all our different outreaches coming up over the next couple of weeks. And then the ones in November and then the ones in December. Thank you so much for Kids Club, Youth Club. Club. Thank you so much for Alpha. Thank you for all the incredible things that's happened in church, Lord, from all the different things that we do. And I pray your blessing continued upon them. And I pray that many people are going to come to know your heart, know your love, and know your forgiveness. I pray, Holy Spirit, would you just touch our hearts today? Let us know that we're loved. Let us know that we're favored. Let us know, God, that you are for us. In Jesus' name, amen. So guys, thank you so much. And I really do encourage you, continue to pray during the week. Continue to pray when you get an opportunity. Pause what you've just listened to. Play it back. Pray over the things because we're believing for breakthrough. Uh, I also want us to give us an opportunity today to give. And I really encourage you to give. Maybe you haven't given in a while. Maybe, maybe you've given us a long time ago. Well, can I encourage you to give? Not because we need your money, but because God has blessed you and he commands us to give because he says, I want you to have the same heart that I have. And as you give, you look like me. And as you give, you bless and you multiply. And as you give, God multiplies multiplies and blesses back to you. So check out this slide for the next minute or so. It'll tell you how to give. Be bold with your giving. Do it by faith. Do not hold back because God has already blessed so much. And watch how you use you give by faith. God honors you in return. So thank you. talk about radical change. We are on a journey, we've been for the last few weeks, we're going to continue for the next few weeks on a journey of how do we live vibrant for God in every circumstance and in every way. I want to pray that the Holy Spirit will just challenge us, change us today. So let's pray just for a moment. Uh, Lord, I thank you today. Thank you that we're tuned in. Thank you for listening. And I pray, Lord, that we're tuned in to you and you're speaking. Lord, I thank you for the wonderful things that you've been doing this last few weeks. We pray the same again today. Let us be changed. Let us be transformed. Let us be completely renewed. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So we're going to talk about identity today. We're going to talk about our identity. How do we see ourselves? How do we feel other people see ourselves? You know, when you think about identity, there are so many things you can go to, but I want us to go to what the Bible says. Here's what it says in Colossians 3.3. 3. It says, for you died. This is us for Christians today. If you're not a Christian, then I encourage you, put your faith in Jesus. But if you are, it says this, you have died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. It's literally saying our location has changed. You've moved home. You've moved house. You once lived here, maybe whatever your address is, think of your address, and now literally you've moved into Christ. You've moved into God. His life has come into you. You've moved into Christ and your life will never be the same again. And so therefore your identity has changed because now the power of God, the life of God, just Him, He flows through you and you live in Him and it affects every aspect of your identity. 
identity. And that's why I'm excited to talk about what we're talking about today because identity wants to impact our lives at every turn. If we think wrong, if we see wrong, it will impact our choices, our decisions, and even the way that we go, even the decisions that we make. It will impact every aspect of it. And so my question is this, how do you see yourself? Like, what do you see when you see in the mirror? Maybe, maybe you don't even want to do that. Maybe you're like, I definitely don't want to do that. Or, or how do you feel other people see you? And sometimes it's like, I just don't feel very good. Sometimes it's like, I'm amazing. Sometimes it's like, I have no clue. Sometimes it's like, I feel so confused. I feel so uncertain. And yet God says, I want you to feel certain. I want you to know who you are in me. I want you to have clarity. I want you to have perspective. And I want you to dream. I want you to think big. And today as we're thinking about this, I really want to challenge your thinking to go, hey, if our identity is not correct, if we're not thinking correctly, then we're not going to dream. We're not going to process. We're not going to think in the way that God calls us to. And he's called us to dream big. Why couldn't you be the one that transforms your school? Why couldn't you be the one that transforms your university? Why couldn't you be the one who sticks out in your workplace with love, with grace, and sees revival in your workplace? Why couldn't it be you that wherever you go, you bring the love and the hope of Jesus to the world? I mean, we're going to our light party just next week, and the whole idea is to come in from John where it talks about we're the light of the world, and the darkness can't hide it, and wherever the, the light comes, darkness can't comprehend it. Light always lights up darkness. It's incredible, and that's what you do. And our identity, if you are a Christian, you are in Christ, and so that affects things. And so maybe you're saying to yourself, look, I don't like how I look. I'm not confident in myself. I'm, I, you know, I, I don't want to believe in this. I'm useless. I'm not perfect. I, maybe I'm perfect. Maybe I'm like so full of ego. I'm all of these different things. And all of those are going to affect how you feel. All of those things are going to affect what you say and what you do. And then the other question was like, how does, how does other people feel about you? Maybe you're guessing this. Maybe you're like, no, nobody likes me, this person, that person. And I'm telling you, all of that wants to affect us. All of that wants to come in and literally just steal our identity. I don't know if you heard this recently, but there's this term called identity theft. It's become this really big thing in this last few years. And it's literally the idea of somebody takes your identity or your possessions and they use them for themselves. And it usually ends up in financial gain. They like take your identity, they take your bank details, they take your online bank of details, the card details, whatever it might be, and they use it for their own gain. In fact, where it comes from is this idea of that our data now is worth more than gold. It's worth more than oil. It's the richest thing on the planet. Your data or your data, whatever way you want to say it, is worth so much. And if people can get that and steal it from you and use it for their own benefit, it literally it's literally like gold, better than gold, better than oil. And so here's a few stats of how, how often this happens. In the U.S. alone, this is just the U.S., and there's global figures as well, but $56 billion has been lost to identity fraud. Literally just people stealing bank details and taking money or using it to buy this thing or using it to do that thing, literally just losing $56 billion. Here's another stat from the world. Every two seconds, someone's getting their identity ripped off. Every two seconds, somebody's getting their identity taken from them, and it's being used by somebody else, used against them, used for monetary gain, used for advantage in an, in an illegal way. Uh, over COVID, I mean, maybe COVID was bad for you. I think, it, look, it was bad for everybody in some degree or some fashion, but it never kicked off more than in COVID. 400 million in America alone, $400 million was stole in the last year from January 2020. In other words, the scam guys had a field day with COVID-19 scams. Our identity is a big deal, and people are out to get it. And so the question might be like, hey, could this happen to me? Could my identity be stolen? I'm telling you, this has happened all the way back from the Garden of Eden where the first identity theft took place. When Eve gets a word from the enemy and she comes to her husband and says, could it be? Uh, I mean, maybe we, there's a better deal for us on the other side. Maybe we should give up our rights. Maybe we should give up our identity. And the enemy speaks a word that says, hey, you're not, it's not what it seems. And he lies to her and he tricks her. And then the husband gets into the middle of it. And before you know it, we've got the first identity fraud or the first identity thief in all of history. And it's been happening ever since. And so could it happen to you? Well, I don't know about practically, but I tell you what, spiritually, absolutely. The enemy has got a plan every single day to bombard your thinking to steal your identity. He literally wants you to believe every lie in the book. He wants to deceive you at every turn. I mean, I've heard story about stories like, oh, I heard this one say this about me. I'm like, did they say it? No, I just heard it. And it's like all these, all these like, kind of different wee things just trying to get in the mix to steal our hope, to steal our identity, to steal who we are. So we start to live a different way. 
And the enemy does this over and over and over again. His tactic is never like, how do I get you not to be a Christian? Because it's almost like too hard to do that. Or how do I get you unsaved? I mean, he can't work like that. But what he does is he gets you to believe lies. He bombards you with this thing and that thing. You start to believe this thing. And you start to be shaped by that thing. And before you know it, you're not even sure what the Word of God says. You're not even sure what God says about you. And your identity is being shaped and formed by many other things. I read this just recently. Today, more than ever, our identity has been shaped by our parents, by our friends, uh, by social media, by what we think, by what we feel, by our emotions. Uh, and then what that does is it leads us to a natural overflow to what we do. So whatever someone says about us naturally leads us to what we do. Whatever somebody thinks about us naturally leads us to what we do. And so more than ever, since stats began, we're more unhappy because we're literally doing things that we never really wanted to do, whether it be good or bad, whether it be a job, whether it be something you shouldn't be up to, whether it be trouble, whether it be good. It's like we're literally doing things we don't want to do, but we're being fooled because our identity is coming from the wrong places and it's coming from the wrong sources. And I want to tell us today that we want to get our identity from God. What does he say? What does he call us to? Because he has a wonderful identity for us. If we're not careful, here's what the enemy wants to do. He wants to rob you of your inheritance. He wants to rob you of your mood. He wants to rob you of your peace, your dreams, your passion, and literally your life. Because if he can get you to do that, then you're not living in the way God's called you to live. And you won't dream big. And you won't step out into the purposes and plans that God's got for you. And you won't be the light of the hope to the world. You'll just be like everybody else. And I want to challenge you. Does your life look like everybody else's? If it does and you're a Christian, then your identity is being stolen by the enemy. You're believing less. You're thinking less. You're not stepping into all that God has for you because we're called to be different. We're called to stand out. It's just who we are. We literally stand out. We go against the grain. We go against the flow. A friend of mine said this recently. He said, literally, if you're not going against the flow and you're going with the flow, then you're a dead fish because fish want to swim. And if you're a dead fish, then you just go with the flow. And he says, hey, we cannot go with the flow as Christians. We're here to make a difference. We're the light of the world. And so I want to encourage you, just like Jesus, he came not to be served, but to serve. I've come to make a difference, not just sit here. We have got the same anointing. In fact, when Jesus left the world, what did he say? I've got to go. Because if I don't go, the Holy Spirit won't come. And you've got to do greater things than me. And you're like, what, Jesus? This makes no sense. That we're going to do greater things than you? And he said, yeah. And the reason why? Because the same Spirit, the Holy Spirit that was in Jesus that took him off the grave, that took him out of the grave and off the cross, is the same Spirit that lives in us, the Holy Spirit. The moment you accepted Jesus into your life, the Holy Spirit comes and he dwells in your life. And then there's more. He says, I want to baptize you. I want to overflow you. And so Acts chapter 1, 8 says that when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you'll be my witnesses. When his power comes upon you, you'll be my witnesses. You'll literally be like, we can't shut up. We can't stop talking. We can't stop shining for the things of God because what God has done in my life is just I can't stop. He's amazing. I tell you, when we get touched with the Holy Spirit and we allow the Holy Spirit to fill us over and over and over again, it reminds us of our identity. It calls us to our purposes and it makes us bold to step into the things that God has for us. I want to tell you about a crazy story today. Well, at least I think it's a crazy story. Uh, Marina, this is a girl called Marina living all the way back, I think 50s, 60s. Uh, and the story goes that she was in Colombia with her family and they got abducted at four or five. She's not quite sure when it happened because w w what I'll tell you next. She gets abducted at four or five. And whatever happens in the next few hours, I think she's like been knocked out cold or whatever. They've drugged her, different things. She's been abducted, probably to be trafficked, to be sold. But whatever happens, something goes wrong and she gets dumped in the jungle, the Amazon jungle. And no one knows where she is. No one has a clue where she is. I tell you, for the next five to six years, she lives in the jungle. And you're like, how on earth does she live in the jungle? Well, guess what? She ended up getting in a spot and there's all these different monkeys. And she started to watch the monkeys. She tells us in her testimony, tells us in her story. She started to watch the monkeys. She was four or five, could barely speak, didn't really know what was going on. Imagine back to four or five, you have no clue what's going on. You rely on your parents for absolutely everything. And she said this, she started to notice the community they had. She started to notice how they ate. She started to notice how they slept. She started to notice how they climbed. Started to notice how they got on. And she started to bit by bit, day by day, start to act like a monkey. She says it got that bad. I mean, this sounds hilarious, but it got that bad that literally she's in the middle of the Amazon rainforest. This is the only way to survive. She forgot how to speak. She didn't even think she could speak. And by the time she gets found at 10 years old, she's completely just living like a wild animal. She's just completely living like a monkey. She, her 
her story doesn't end there. She gets taken by these guys, uh, by like slavery guys or human traffic guys, gets sold into a brothel in Colombia, one of the main cities, and then for the next four or five years, it's just sold into sex, slave, sex slavery. It's just horrendous. And then one of the girls next door to the brothel that was going on, seen her, recognized her, just realized how terrible this was, rescued her, and she gets sent on a boat or a plane or something all the way back to England. And the thing that grabbed my, my heart in this story is like, here's a girl who's four or five, gets dropped into the situation which she just cannot process, can't get her head around, and then day by day, she starts to lose her identity. Day by day, she starts to become like her surroundings. Day by day, she starts to think like she's just one of those animals. She's just one of those things. She forgets who she is. In Genesis 1, it tells us we're made in God's image, made in this very likeness. And when we come to Christ, we're children of God. Before that, we're lost in our sin, but the moment we accept Jesus, we become sons and daughters of the living God. That's our true identity. Our identity gets restored because your true identity is a son or daughter of God. It is sin that has pressed us down. It is sin that has separated. It is sin that destroys. And imagine this girl Marina in the midst of an Amazon jungle just trying to survive. And all that she could see was these monkeys. She was like, maybe they'll take care of me. I don't even know how your brain processes at four or five. But for the next five years, she's there. Then she comes from there, and the guys that abduct her go, this, this girl's worthless. This girl's useless. Like, what are we going to do with her? Sell her into the brothel. She's only good for one thing. She had no clue what's going on. First, she's hanging out with the monkeys, and now she's sold into sex slavery and has no clue what's going on. Horrendous. And yet, somehow, some way, it's like a Jesus-type figure. This lady next door sees her, rescues her, and it transforms her whole life. I want to tell you today that wherever you are, no matter what you have been through, I hope it's not been a story like that, but whatever you have been through, God wants to bring you back to your true identity. He wants to redeem you and restore you. In actual fact, he'll use every single thing of your past for good that our, we're called to accept it and say, okay, God, I surrender this. I can't go back. I cannot change, but that's not who I am. You've called me to so much more. You have called me to greater things. He's literally, absolutely incredible. And so we've got to remember that when we come to Jesus, we are not being influenced by anything else anymore. We are now in Christ. And so our starting place. It's totally different. We are with Jesus in the beginning. We're not being dictated to by this one or that one, whether they love us or hate us. We're not being dictated to by our feelings or what the opportunities come from. My true identity is established in Christ. Let me read Ephesians 1.14. It says this, for he chose us in him. Listen to this language. It's incredible. He chose us in him before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. Wow. And in love, now it says, in love he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ. Wow, these words are so technical. These words are so incredible. But the bones of it is this, is that before the world was created, he chose you. So no one's ever been an accident. No one's ever been a mistake. He has chosen us from the very foundations of the world. And he chose us in love. And he called us to himself. In him, it says. In Jesus. And remember, God is love. There is no love outside of God. No, no true love. Because love was established in him. And he is love. And he says, I have, bo I have known you before your mother's womb. I have known you before the world was created. And I chose you in love. And then he goes on to say, in love he predestined us. What does that mean? I mean, here's the wonder here's the mystery of God. In love, he predestined us to, for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ. So in other words, he's already predestined us from the beginning of the world, from the foundations, from before the foundations of the world to be sons and daughters of the living God. But in the majesty and the mystery and the wonder of God, he says, it's your choice. I want free will. I, I want to honor you with free will. I want to give you free will because he understands real relationships based around choice. And although I chose you, I want you to choose me. And this is how we step into our identity day after day. Initially, we say yes to Jesus. That's our salvation. And then we come to him. But then it's day after day, I step into my true identity as a son and daughter of the living God. And I really pray that you grab my heart today because this will foundationally transform your whole thinking. Because sometimes we're getting distracted by this thing that thing. Our mood's being affected, our actions are being affected, and we're literally doing things we were never ever made for or called for, but we're doing them because it either pleases somebody else, or we think it's the right thing to do, or we're just confused or unsure, so we go with whatever we're talented at, or whatever's convenient. And I tell you, you're going to find your true identity in God, because before the foundation of the world, you were chose in Him. And before the creation of everything, you were destined to be holy and blameless in His sight. And in love, He predestined you to adoption, 
sonship through Jesus Christ. And can I just break down the adoption thing just for a few moments? Paul, who wrote this letter to the Ephesians, understood adoption from a Roman process. And so he writes it to the readers with this in mind because it's like a metaphor. He wants them to understand what it's like to be in Christ. Well, there was three main aspects of adoption back in Roman times. You would be adopted into a Roman family from uh, usually a slave family, and they would adopt you fully in. And when they did that, three incredible things happened. Number one, your debts were fully paid. If you owed any debts, if there's any debts attached to you, because remember, whatever debts your parents had would suddenly become your debts, all of those were taken care of. Number one, your debts were taken care of. Your sin, in a sense. Number two, your name was changed. You were no longer whatever you were called before you were given a new name. And this reminds me of the story of Saul to Paul when he's on the road to Damascus and the Lord just says, Saul, Saul, what are you doing? And he says, Lord, uh, he's like, oh, what's going on? What's going on? By the end of it, he commits his life to Jesus and God changes his name. And he says, no longer Saul, but Paul. It's the same in our lives. We might have been called something else before, but now we're sons and daughters of the living God. And then finally, and this is incredible, Whatever that person was before, they had no wealth, they had poverty, they had debts, they had all these different things behind them. The third and final thing when they were adopted into this Roman family was they got a full inheritance. They were treated no differently from any other son or daughter in the family. I want to tell you, it's the same for you. Whenever you're adopted into him, it says when you come to salvation, you're adopted to sonship. And sonship is the generic word, so please, it's, you're not becoming all boys. It's girls and boys. It all fits in there. It's sonship through Jesus Christ. He has brought us with love into the completeness of his family, into the completeness of your identity. And he says, your debts have been paid. You've got a brand new name, a brand new start, and you've got a full inheritance in, in you and for you right now here today. You don't have to wait to have it. You can use it and utilize it today. This is what adoption means. And this is why it's so important that we grasp this. And if you're not a Christian, then you should come today and say yes to Jesus. Because he said, if you would just believe in me, then you can have all that we're talking about. Jesus is absolutely incredible, incredible, and he literally changes everything. Can you imagine how much more this means in Christ? Paul meant it from a Roman perspective to try and get a glimpse of how much God changes our lives, how much Jesus transforms our heart, but this is what it is times 10 more, times even more. And so I want to say, how do you see yourself in the midst of what we're talking about? Because sometimes we can still feel rejected when we should feel accepted, because we know that we're accepted. And I want to tell you that sometimes you may feel like it, but with the word, you just go Ephesians 1, 4, and 5. I know that I'm fully accepted because Jesus' word is greater than my word. Number two, you're either in chains or you're set free. I want to believe today that you're being set free and you are set free if you're in Christ. If you're not, then you can be by trusting in him. You're either under the law which simply means that you're always trying to keep yourself right, or you're under grace, which means God's forgiven you, and you, and you enjoy his forgiveness. And then with his grace, it empowers you for bigger and better things in Christ, in God. And then you're either orphaned or you're adopted. And remember, an orphan never has what they need. An orphan never knows what's coming next. An orphan's always jealous of everybody else. An orphan's always looking like they're going to do without and they need to take from everybody else because it's always running out. An orphan never has anything, never has a true identity, never knows true love, never knows what their purpose is, never knows what their call is, doesn't even realize that there is a call or purpose on their lives. And as Christians, it's possible to still live with an orphan mindset. And so we have to know our identity in God and we have to face up to some of the things we've had before. And that's where we go, acceptance, surrender, and let it go. Where we say to ourselves, okay, I'm not going to live. I might have made mistakes before. I might have thought things before. I might, need, I might even had a mistake today. But that's not going to define me any longer. I'm defined by my position in Christ, not by what I've done. It's all about what he's done. Amen. This is a game changer in all of our lives. And guess what? It means that we treat better people better. It means that we're kinder in our actions. It means that we can actually be a blessing to the world rather than the opposite. We don't always have to get. We're ready to give far more than receive. We're ready to be a blessing to people. We don't need a thanks all the time. We don't need a packet pat on the back all the time. We don't need affirmed all the time. We don't need told all the time how great or good we are. I have all of that in Christ. And if I get it, it's nice but it's not a requirement or a necessity because I'm in Christ and I'm found in him. You see, here's the truth. We are sons of God. All of us are sons of God, whether we're male or female. Knowing the Father's love. When we come into our true identity, we're sons of God, knowing the Father's love, empowered by the Holy Spirit, knowing the friendship of Jesus, changing the world changing the world forevermore, stepping into the fullness and all that he has for us. And so here's what I love about identity in God. It's not about what you do. In fact, it doesn't even matter what you do. 
God's not, God's not fussy what you do. I mean, the simple mandate that he gives is to go into all the world and be light. Go into all the world and reveal the Father's heart and watch how men and women of all ages will come to faith. Because they'll be like, wow, the, the love that you're talking about, the truth that you're talking about, the grace that you're talking about, the forgiveness that you're talking about, that's exactly what I need. Remember, when we're in Christ, we have, we're all that we need. When we're in Christ, he meets all of our needs. And so even when there's times where I struggle, even when there's times where I'm unsure, I'm in Christ. And so I remind myself of that and I build myself up in the things of God and it helps me to think better, act better, talk better. It affects every area of my life. Your identity now, if you're in Christ, is in God and it starts from that place. And it's not what you do. And here's the game changer in that. It's like, if you can't do what you do anymore, it doesn't affect you. So it's like, that's not my true identity. I mean, you're just a person who happens to work there, but you're not your work. I mean, don't let anybody else lie to you. Maybe you like really love doing this thing. You really love doing that thing. But if that thing gets taken from you, it's not your identity. It's just what you're able to do. Your identity is a son or daughter in the living God. So in every place and in every position, no matter where you find yourself, with a boss, getting married, here, there, or everywhere, you're always a son or you're a daughter. That's your first identity. And from that place, you can move forward, knowing that you're accepted, knowing that you're loved. This is why I love in, the, in Jesus in the early part of the gospel is that heaven's open, Jesus being baptized in the Jordan, and heaven speaks from, God speaks from heaven and says, here's my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. He hadn't done anything, and yet God's affirming his position. Why? Because it's not about what you do. It's not dictating to your worth or value. And this is so important because the world that we live in, it's all about your worth. It's all about what you do. If you work hard enough, you get more money, hopefully. If you go to university and work really hard, you'll hopefully get the reward you deserve. Now, this is not a substitute to say to you, like, you don't have to work, you don't have to do anything. But I'm simply saying this, your identity is not wrapped up in that. Now you can work from your identity and work out from there rather than always trying to chase it. Because the problem when you're trying to chase it is if you have a good day, you feel good. If you've got a bad day, you feel bad. If you get a bad phone call, you feel bad. If things don't work out the way you hope for, you feel bad. If you get sacked from your job, it's more than just feeling bad. You hit rock bottom because that's who I was. That's what I do. What am I supposed to do now? And we build our routines and we build our life around it. We build our whole, we build our whole thinking around it. And it's like, you're not who you are anymore. You're like, oh yeah, you're, you're the cleaner. You're the teacher. You're the doctor. You're this person. You're that person. People say that stuff all of the time. And it's nice, but it's not true. If you're a Christian, then your identity is you're a son of the living God. You're a daughter of the living God. That impacts and that changes everything. Good news. No matter what happens, you're not a victim. You're in Christ. I got to tell you this, this is, this is going to change things. No matter what happens in your life, no matter who talked to you, who didn't talk to you, what job you didn't get, what job you didn't get, what money, money you lost, what fine you got, what accident took place, you are never, ever, ever a victim. Amen, if you're in Christ. Never, ever. Now, are you a victim of circumstances? Absolutely, that can happen all of the time. But you're never a victim because that's your identity. And you're never a victim when you're in Christ. You're a victor. You're victorious. You're an overcomer. You're incredible in all your ways because God is inside of you. And this is not just positive talk or good feelings. This is the reality of our lives because we're in Christ. And so here's where it comes down to. See, if we're not in Christ... The Bible teaches us that when we get before God, he's a holy judge. And when we get before God, if we are not in Christ, God will see us for who we are. And know what he'll see? Imperfection. And only perfection can get into heaven. And this is what the Bible teaches, that he, Jesus' blood literally washes us white as snow and we become in Christ. It's like we just move home, like we said at the very start. And I start to live in Christ. I live and have my being in Christ. And now in Judgment Day, or in that final day, when God looks at me, what does he see? He sees Jesus. He says, okay, let's go. Come to heaven, let's go. He sees Jesus because he sees the perfect sacrifice. He sees us in Christ, and it's radically changed every aspect of our lives. So God restores, and I want to finish off with this final story, and then we're done. Jeremiah 18, chapter, one, or chapter 18, verse 1, says, This is the word that came to Jeremiah, a prophet from the Old Testament. It says, Go down to the potter's house, and there I will give you a message. This is God literally speaking to Jeremiah. So I went down to the potter's house, and I saw him working at the wheel. Potter's wheel, it clays on, and you've probably seen it. Uh, I don't know if you have one, but people get it, and it literally spins around. And you put the, the clay on, and you can mold and make things. Uh, verse 4, but the pot was shaped, but, but the pot that he was shaping from the clay was marred in his hands. In other words, ruined. It's just an old word for ruined. 
So the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as it seemed best to him. So he transformed the pot. When the problems came, he literally just worked on it, molded at it, shaped it, and it became that beautiful pot that he designed it to be. Then the word of the Lord came to me and he said, Can I not do this with you, Israel, as, I, I, as the potter does, declares the Lord? Like clay in the hand of the potter, so are you in my hand, Israel. This is God speaking all the way back thousands of years ago to, his children, to the children of Israel. God's chosen people, a bit like us today. We're God's chosen people. And they'd messed up, they'd made mistakes, they hadn't done right things, they hadn't acted correctly, they'd, they were against God, they were for God, they couldn't make up their mind, they were doing loads of sinful things. And yet God sends word from heaven to Jeremiah to tell the people, just like the potter, just like the clay on the potter's wheel, whenever it goes wrong, the potter can correct it, the potter can fix things, the potter can restore its beauty, the potter can restore life again. God said, I can do the same for you guys. I can do the same for the people of Israel. And God says the same for us. Maybe you find yourself, hey, look, I've been living this way and I've been thinking this way. And even as a Christian, my life wasn't adding up to much. What, what did it matter? I wasn't living this way. I wasn't doing the right stuff. I want to tell you, God says you're a work in progress. He's never expecting you to be perfect. I mean, he never ever does. That's why we're in Christ because he's perfect. So we can make it to heaven. But God says, I, I want to work with you. I want to transform your life. I want to remind you of who you are. I want you to dream again. I want you to think big again. I want you to, to have uh, fresh thoughts and fresh ideas and appreciate who you are and realize who you are in me. I want you to breathe. I, I want you to understand my love for you. And so God says today, I want you to know that you're a bit like that clay on the potter's wheel. I can mold you. I can shape you. If you can trust me, if you can give me your life, if you, if you want to turn back, if you want to repent, if you want to say, hey, God, help me, he's able to do that. And so what do we do? Well, in Christ, we've got to remind ourselves of three quick things. We're forgiven, we're loved, and we're called. And God needs us to know this. And this is our identity. And I want to call you to your identity, your true identity in Christ. You're forgiven if you're a new creation. You're forgiven if you've asked Jesus into your life. You're loved. Do you know the love of God? Because it wants to increase every single day so you know over and over again that you're loved. And then number three, you're called. There's a plan and purpose for your life. You've got to know there are things in your life that you can, I mean, if God revealed them all at once, you'd be just so scared. You'd be like, I'm never doing that, God, because that's just way above what I can imagine. Remember this, if you feel overwhelmed by the things that God's calling you to, it's not about him, it's just about identity. It's about him shaping your identity because he knows what he's called you to. Remember, he predestined you in love before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. And he predestined you for sonship uh, to adoption uh, through Lord Jesus Christ. This is what he has called us to. In him, he chose us. And so I want to remind you, sometimes we don't feel like it, sometimes we don't think like it, and all it is is a great revelation that our identity is not in Christ because we're not thinking the way that God's called us to think. We're not thinking the way that He sees us. And so we come to Him and He restores us. Last verse is this. What do we do? Romans 8, 28. And we know that in all things God works for the good of all those who love Him, who have been called according to His purposes. Can I just tell you this, that nothing is wasted? I mean, whatever has happened in life, nothing is wasted. He redeems all things. He uses all things for his glory. I can think back to many times in life where I made a mistake here and I made a mistake there, whether it be I lost money trying to do an idea, whether it be like messed up on a job, whether it be I let down someone, whether it be I, I said something stupid to someone. I look back at it now, you know what? It, it taught me things. It revealed things. There was consequences and I had to live with those things. But it brought me to a healthier place in God because I was like, okay, Lord, I was able to learn from that or that mistake made me stronger or this thing brought me correction or this thing reveals something and it allowed me to understand and allowed me to see that God redeems all things. And so I want to encourage you, nothing is wasted. And so in the light of us being in Christ, let's think about this as we finish. Let's dream bigger. Let's believe bigger. Let's accept our past and be excited for today. And let's live as sons and daughters that God has called us to. Come on, we're going to pray. Lord, I thank you today for your goodness. And I pray, Lord, for this radical change. Maybe we've never been radically changed in the things of God. I want to believe today what the Bible says. If we would simply believe in Jesus and confess with our minds that he is Lord, that he literally, Jesus, I want you in my life. And we tell our friends and we tell people around us, it's like he's so faithful to transform us. And we don't have to come perfect. We don't have to come at all worked out. We just come whatever way we can. And he restores us and he helps us. I'm so glad that the radical change that God talks about is one that's happening every single day. It's one that's transforming every single day. And if I will simply come to him, he helps me to be in Christ. He sustains me. He helps me. His grace enables me. And his love is all around me. 
And so he does the hard work, and I simply recognize who I belong to. Lord, I thank you that I'm not what I do. I thank you, Jesus, that whoever's listening to whoever's watching today, you are not what you do. You might happen to do some good stuff. You might be talented in that area, but that's not who you truly are. It doesn't matter what somebody else says. It doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't even matter what a close friend or family or even parents says. It's what does God say? He's got plans for your life. He knows you. He's known you from the creation, from the beginning of the creation. He made you. He's your maker. He knows you better than anybody else. Lord, I pray today that you would call us back to our true identity as sons and daughters. I pray today, Lord, that we wouldn't pine in the past, wouldn't live in the past, wouldn't be uh, guilty over the past, but we would simply come to you and uh, receive that forgiveness that you offer and allow us to come out change the other side. Jesus, I thank you for all that you're doing, and I pray, Holy Spirit, touch our hearts, transform our spirits. In Jesus' name, amen. Guys, thank you so much for watching today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Always bless you here. Please share it. Let somebody know what's going on. If you're local, come down and see us. Uh, Enjoy this last song and be blessed in Jesus' name. When the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Oh, the God I serve knows only how to triumph. My God will never fail, no, you won't. Oh, my God will never fail. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. There's power in the mighty name of Jesus. For every war he wages, he will win. Oh, I'm not backing down from any giant. Oh, I know, I know how this story ends. Yes, I know. Yes, I know. Turn it for good. Yeah. You take the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. Yes, you do. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. The enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. Oh, you turn it for good. Make it all be good, yeah. Oh, you take the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. Oh, you turn it for good. You take the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it. Oh, 
Oh, see.